Yep, and hi everyone, uh, I'm Alex Katz. I'm a senior software engineer at Capital One. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about minimizing data loss within the Open Collection Collective. Um, so to first give a quick overview of the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, as owners of the collector process, we have much more control over the resiliency of the collector itself than we do our data, right? Um, we can make the collector process itself resilient, but the issue with these types of distributed data pipelines is that they're only as resilient as the weakest link in the chain, right? So um, if I can guarantee that my collector is available 100% of the time, but my observability backend is only up 90 or 99% of the time, that's my actual on time, right? Um, so to talk about the current state of resiliency uh, within the collector, especially when it comes to permanent downstream failures, um, so data resiliency is exclusively handled by exporters, right? So exporters are fully responsible for ensuring that our data successfully makes it to its target destination. Um, and exporters tend to have some out-of-the-box uh, features uh, that are do kind of bad for resiliency, like uh, you know uh, retry, retry settings, uh, in memory queue, and optional or persistent queue. But all of those are more so geared towards retry or kind of. Um, temporary errors like rate limits or timeouts. Uh, in the case of the persistent queue, um, you know, if my collector crashes and I have data in that queue, when the collector spins back up, that data won't be lost, right? But none of these really address the issue of, you know, downstream failures. How do I not let my service failing downstream and I'll cause all my data to go out the door? Um, so enter connectors. Um, I'm going to give like a 30 second overview of connectors, um, but I'm going to be barely scratching the surface. Uh, I think there was a very good talk on connectors at last year's KubeCon. So if you're interested, definitely take, uh, give that one a listen. Um, so for our purposes though, Connectors are just a way to connect multiple pipelines in a single collector, right? So traditionally, data enters uh, the collector through a receiver, goes through the processor pipeline, and exits the collector through an exporter, right? But instead of having data exit the, uh, the collector through the exporter, you can actually have it consumed by essentially the start of another pipeline. Um, and another kind of cool thing about this is that um, it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one mapping, right? So you can have, actually have one kind of exporter portion mapped to, multi, let's say, five different uh, starts of different pipelines, right? Um, so that opens the door to uh, essentially the failover connector, right? So the failover connector, pretty intuitive, uh, is essentially just a health-based router uh, in the collector that is going to route your traffic and determine kind of which path is hot based off the, uh, the health status of each pipeline. So it'll always try to export to the highest priority pipeline that's healthy. Um, so in this case, for example, we can assume that the first two went down, so now it's uh, exporting to the, to the third. Um, so to quickly go over the configuration for the connector, uh, just so that we have an idea of how it works. So the main and kind of only required uh, parameter is priority level. So uh, it's an array of arrays that um, you can put multiple pipelines at each level. Uh, the one caveat there is that if a single pipeline goes unhealthy, then that entire level is viewed as unhealthy and it'll fail over to the next level. Uh, retry interval is how often the connector will go back up to the top uh, top of the list, and again work its way down trying to re-establish a healthy connection. Retry gap is how long it'll wait between two levels. So for example, um, if I'm uh, currently on level three, when it goes through the retry interval, it'll first start, uh, it'll retry level one. If that fails, it'll wait the retry gap and then try level two. And then max retries is how many retries before we say that this is permanently, um, permanently unhealthy, uh, that we won't try, won't retry uh, within this collector run. Um, and this can be disabled. Um, so what can I do with this? Um, so going back to the problem that we were trying to solve um, is that we want to um, we want a way to handle prolonged downstream failures. Um, and that's exactly what the failover connector allows us to do. Um, so I'll quickly go over a few potential architectures. Um, and this list is definitely not exhaustive, but um, so first, probably the simplest one, cross-region failover, right? You're running active-active in multiple regions. Uh, one of them goes down, assuming you're scaled properly to handle that uh, increase in traffic. You now can now route all of your data to the, to the other region. Um, bypassing the next target. Let's say you're using the agent gateway collector model um, and you have an issue with your gateways. Uh, you can actually set like a last priority uh, 
like rule in the connector that um, export directly to my observability backend. Like you might lose some optimizations, uh, some enhancements or whatever else you're doing on the gateway side, but important part is that, that data won't be lost. Uh, third, uh, high uptime target. Um, so this would be something like an AWS, you know, S3 or Kinesis, maybe PubSub and GCP, or if you have like a well-managed Kafka cluster, that's definitely an option also. The idea is that it might not be the best route for your data to take, it might not be the best in terms of cost or uh, latency, but the data won't be lost. That, that's the important part. Um, so that's about it, um, out of time. Um, the TLDR on this is, if you have an applicable use case, use the failover connector. Uh, that way we can kind of you know, make feature requests and continue to enhance it going forward. Thank you, everyone.